So ladies and gentlemen, we're a side opposition today that stands the principle of separation of church and state. We're a side opposition that's here to tell you today it's unfair that one particular interest group is able to weld so much power and influence over the majority and that it's not necessarily actually the best thing for democracy. I'm going to be getting into a third constructive point on our side of the house today, the social divide. But before we do that, let's take a look at what we've seen from the other side of the house so far. Now, the first idea we saw is this idea that influence helps people understand who they're voting for, right? So we have two responses. First of all, we think this only works when people are exposed to more than one influence, and they're able to choose, given different perspectives, what is actually best for them. We'd say the problem with religion is that it's so powerful that it can often become the only influence that people uh, use that actually results in harms. Now let's talk about this idea of impaired judgment, right? And they told us that impaired judgment is actually just fine. It's fine if people are influenced. Three responses. One, we'd say that just because the religious group is the most powerful group uh, in these people's lives doesn't mean it's necessarily okay for them to have a monopoly on influence, right? We don't think just because of their special position that allows them to strangle whole democracy. Secondly, we'd say that such a huge and influential group isn't actually elected by the majority of people, right? So what you actually end up with is a religious group that is able to influence a huge block of voters and make a huge dent in society, but isn't actually elected by the majority. But finally, let's actually address what is the difference between religion and other interest groups, right? So we'd say that religious groups actually have much more power than other interest groups in society. And the reason that is is because they have a different nature of interaction with the people that they rule over. If a church tells you to vote this way, it's much more likely that someone's able to do it. We think they have to use that power responsibly. And then finally, we saw this idea that like people don't have facts, so it's okay for them to follow the influence. Well, we actually think that's the most dangerous thing that the other side of the house told us today. Because when you don't have the facts, and you're just following the influence of your religious leader, you're not actually making your own decision. You're blindly following what somebody else is telling you. And we actually think that is one of the most dangerous things for our democracy. So let's get into our constructive case today and our third constructive point on our side of the house, which is the social divide. Now what we're going to tell you here is that this actually dichotomizes society. And we're going to tell you it creates a divide between people who vote for religious reasons and people who don't vote for religious reasons. Now what happens when a candidate gets in power? Well, naturally, some people don't want them there, and they vote against them, right? So we think these people that are upset at the choice of, about the choice of leader now have a scapegoat, scapegoat to blame in the religious groups. Now, how does this happen? Two reasons. Number one, what you end up with is a group that all votes the same way um, for selecting their leader, and you have a religious bloc that all follows the influence of their same leader and votes the same way. That makes that voting bloc very powerful in a huge group. Now, number two, we'd say that because that group is so powerful in society, Politicians have to cater very heavily to that group in order to get votes. Politicians need two things to get in power. Number one, money. Number two, votes. So they're actually going to cater to the groups that give them those two things. And we think because you make this group so powerful in society, I'll take you in a second, politicians have to ha actually have to cater to them a disproportionate amount. If your house you defined it as Western liberal democracies, in Western liberal democracy aren't larger voting blocks things like the youth and things like those that pol that political leaders were target more than like let's say a subset of like things. Well, we actually think under the status quo, religious groups can be a huge voting bloc that we think has power globally because of the amount of influence they have over their constituents. Right? We think that the nature of religion and the fact that a pastor can tell you to vote a certain way and you'll do it is a problem because it forces candidates to cater to the groups that can give them votes, right? So we'd say that the fact that religious groups now have this much power makes everybody else in society upset, right? Because their voice is watered down. And what it does is it introduces a deep divide between the people that vote for religious reasons and the others who are upset at them because they think they have a disproportionate amount of power. So what's the result here? Say that both groups are now angry at each other, right? And the way governance happens furthers this divide. Because the government that is elected on the religious vote has to cater to the religious vote, we think that further upsets the people that haven't actually voted for it. So let's tie this argument back. What we're saying today is that when religious leaders have power over their subjects and they all vote the same way, they have too much power. We say that results in other groups in society getting upset about the disproportionate amount of power they have. It divides the religious and non-religious parts of society even further, and that's a further harm on our side of the house today. So ladies and gentlemen, is because we stand by the principles of separation of church and state, we tell you that um, people should have equal representation in society, and we stand by not creating a further social divide, that we're proud to oppose this motion. Thank you.